Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. I would call him as a traitor who having educated at expense of society not paying any heed to the society Swami Vivekananda. Because I have chosen this thing because of 15th August was a independence day. So and we should uh, contribute for the society and to have a good bond with the society. right? And um, if you recall that uh, in the last lecture, we discussed about basically uh, how to calculate the heat of reaction using the bond energy. And later on, we look at thermochemistry law that is known as Lavoisier Laplace law and which helps us in uh, basically uh, using the heat of formation in the forward or the reverse directions. right? And uh, now we will be uh, discussing about the Hayes law. We state that in a chemical reaction, the total amount of heat uh, will be same whether it is taking a single step or it is taking a multiple steps. In other words, it does not depend upon number of steps, whatever the amount of heat being released, right. That means, what is indicates? It indicates that it is a path function or a point function. It is independent of number of steps, that means independent of path, right. That means it is a point function, right. So, and this is nothing but your what you call the first law of thermodynamics, and um, in other words, the Hayes law states that the net heat of reaction depends only on the initial and final state. As I told it is a basically point function. So, let us uh, take an example, we are interested to find out heat of reaction for water gas shift reaction, which uh, is a very familiar reaction which you people will be knowing that is carbon dioxide is reacting with the hydrogen getting into carbon monoxide and water. Right. Of course, here I have given the heat of reaction is 41.16 kilojoule, right. But suppose it is not given, right, we can apply the you know Hess law to find out what will be heat of reaction. How we are going to do? Because we will have to see how this you know reaction is taking place. It can Right. This reaction can be decomposed into various, various steps can be used to have these reactions and for which the heat of reaction will be known. Right. For example, like if we know that CO2 is uh, you know converted into C plus O2, then we know the heat of reaction for that which is happens to be endothermic reaction and that is heat of reaction for this reaction you know is 393.51 kilojoule. And uh, the carbon reacting with half moles of oxygen going to the carbon monoxide for that you know heat will be liberated and this is heat of reaction is minus 110.59 kilojoules and this is known right. And uh, hydrogen can uh, react with oxygen is going to the water. So, if you look at if I sum it up all these reaction because heat of reaction for all these three reaction if I can say this is reaction 1, this is 2 and this 3 all reactions are known then what I will do I will just sum it up and if you look at this is uh, cancel it out and these two are cancelled with these nothing but CO2 plus hydrogen going to the product CO and water. And the total uh, if I sum all these three together, I will get 41.16 kilojoule, right. Suppose I, it is not known, unknown, right. 
then I can find out by this intermediate reaction applying the Hess law very easily and find out this right. Are you getting my point? The application of Hess law. So, and this as I told is nothing but basically uh, it comes from the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Now, we will be using this thermochemistry laws right for our calculations of heat of reaction, heat of formations and other things right. Now, having knowing how to handle this thing, our main objective is to find out basically the flame temperature under adiabatic condition because that will tell us that how much maximum temperature one can get if you are burning certain amount of fuel right. So, we will be now learning how to calculate that of course, you might have studied earlier also uh, this thing, but let me repeat so that you will be uh, you know recall and then uh, recapitulate it properly so that you can use it. In a combustion process if no heat is being transferred right which is not true because this is an under what you call theoretical condition or a uh, ideal condition where there would not be any heat transfer right. And then you will attain a temperature which we call it as a adiabatic flame temperature right. This we call T adiabatic that is adiabatic temperature. Let us consider that uh, you know one mole of fuel is getting into a burner along with certain amount of air and it is basically burning it and getting into a product right. For example, I can say that one mole of methane is reacting with two moles of air getting into one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water and what will be the product a nitrogen will be there right 3.74 into 2 moles of nitrogen right. And if I now I want to uh, find out what will be the temperature at the exit of this burner right provided no heat being transferred that means Q is equal to 0 right. Now, what we will do we will have to take a control volume right let us say this is our control volume right and keep in mind that this is a flow system right. If it is a flow system then we will have to also make certain assumptions. What are those assumptions? Uh, steady flow process then what else change in kinetic energy will be 0 change in potential energy will be 0 right. Is there any work done here? The work done also is 0 right. Under these conditions you can invoke the first law of thermodynamics okay. and then you will get that right. Now, if you look at this adiabatic temperature will be depends on what? Suppose you will get some temperature we can we will do that little later on but it will be depend on what? It will depend on the what is the composition of the fuel air right or a fuel oxidizer right and it will be depend on the initial temperature or the initial pressure right. In this case suppose it is one atmospheric pressure right and if the reaction is taking place in this burner what will happen to the pressure? Huh? Will it increase? Certainly no, right, because it is a flow process, right. So, therefore, it will not increase, but if this is not a flow process, but a closed chamber, let us say this is a chamber, right, is a closed chamber. I am reacting with basically uh, fuel plus air, right, no heat is going out, right, this is my system. And starting with initial pressure is one atmospheric pressure, right? One atmospheric pressure. What will happen to pressure? Pressure will increase because why? Temperature has increased. 
and this is a control volume right it is not a control volume it is basically control mass system or a closed system right closed system so therefore the pressure will in this case pressure won't increase is that clear or not now from the first law of thermodynamics for a adiabatic process with no change in kinetic energy right no change in potential energy there is no sapped work i will get hp is equal to hr is it true how i will get this what is the meaning of hp is equal to hr that means enthalpy of the product is equal to enthalpy of the reactant how did i get this any idea sir heat rejected means heat evolved or that means will be absorbed by the product product okay that is the meaning but how did i arrive at this expression that is the question first law first law so that means you will have to write down your first law of thermodynamics right what is that that is de by dt is equal to m dot i h i plus v i square plus g z i minus m dot e is the exit you can say h e plus v e square by g z e plus minus sap to work right steady it is zero sap to work is zero this potential energy is zero right okay and adiabatic so therefore this is zero so therefore what you will be getting you will be getting m dot i h i is equal to m dot e h e and in our example this is your reactant right m m dot h i is nothing but h i is equal to h reactant right yes or no which is basically t i it depends on pressure is equal to m dot e h e is nothing but what h e is nothing but your product which is adiabatic and pressure right are you getting is very simple right so but what is this h r and h p basically we are doing enthalpy balance you know enthalpy of the reactant total enthalpy of the reactant is same as the total enthalpy of the product that is the point we are doing and then let me erase this portion where h r is basically n i h i i is the can be you know like 1 to r 1 to r means what like if it is methane right if i am saying this is methane plus oxygen right okay going to the carbon dioxide water right what will be mole ni for this for the reactant side this reactant reactant means two reactant one is methane other is your oxygen right so if i want to write down here hr what will be this one nch4 h ch4 not okay or i'll put not i i won't put not why because this is not only heat of formation it is will it be heat of formation yes it will be heat of formation total heat of formation right and then n o2 h o2 and this each heat of formation will be having two components one is this is standard heat of formation and this portion is sensible enthalpy 
right are you getting for this example for this example similarly i will have to look at the h product in this case in this example what will be hp n co2 h co2 plus n water and h water in this case n water will be 2 mole and n car carbon dioxide will be 1 isn't it yes or no are you getting this i can write down 1 this is 1 into h co2 plus 2 into h water and each will be having what you call again the heat of uh, standard heat of formation right this is standard heat of formation why standard because it is at 298.15 kelvin right t naught and this naught corresponding to one atmospheric pressure right and this t naught is 298.15 kelvin and this is from this is sensible enthalpy T naught to T adiabatic and CPI keep in mind that specific heat is a function of temperature right you will have to integrate over the uh, you know T naught to T adiabatic that means and this CPI is I means particular species that means CP you will be dependent on temperature also the pertaining species right. So, uh, how we will do that? That is a big problem, like you know, how to calculate that. Okay. And now, so if you want to use this, then only you can calculate what it would be the adiabatic temperature. And keep in mind that for the reactant, it is T naught to T. It happens to be the reactant at 298 Kelvin. What will happen? This will be 0. This will be 0 for T is equal to 298.15 Kelvin. Okay. If initial temperature is that, but if initial temperature is 600 Kelvin, then I cannot make it 0. This sensible enthalpy cannot be 0. It will be some finite value that you will have to calculate. Is that clear? Okay. Now, what is here happening? Of course, this is we have looked at mathematically, but now we will be discussing little bit about you know physically what is happening. What is happening? Can anybody tell me? Heat being released, if heat being released, right, those heat will be utilized to enhance the temperature of the product to certain values, right, and that we call it as adiabatic temperature provided no heat being transferred from system to its surrounding, provided uh, otherwise it will be lower than that lower than the adiabatic temperature what you will get if there is a heat transfer between system and surrounding okay is that clear now if you look at this is basically uh, you know enthalpy line for the reactant enthalpy line for the product with respect to temperature this is your enthalpy total enthalpy right Now, if you recall that I had made these two parallel lines, do you remember, right? But now it is not parallel. Is it looks to be parallel, right? Now this is basically, if I say this happens to be 298.15, right? This temperature. Of course, it is not possible. The scale is not that. I have just, you know, made like that. Otherwise, it will be far away right and if you take a linear scale okay now if i say this thing what will be my this point here this is basically 298.15 kelvin what would be this this is what i will call no this is 
heat of reaction right 298 okay let me write down 1.5 this amount of heat because that is corresponding to standard pressure and temperature right and this heat will be utilized to bring this product to adiabatic temperature. So, more pictorially if you want to say that means reactant has one atmospheric pressure 298.15 Kelvin it is going to the product and this is the heat of reaction right 0 right. And then this heat will be utilized to take this product into T adiabatic this is just to explain you okay, but in actual situation is it happening no and just to explain I am telling you okay, actually it will be going on is that clear. Now, suppose this we are doing right and this is a system right a control volume or an open system we have considered. Now, let us say in a chamber we are what do you call reacting let us say methane is reacting with oxidizer and getting into carbon dioxide and water. What will be the adiabatic temperature how we will handle will it handle this way or we will have to do something that is a question I am asking you please think about it. Now, we will take an example right to estimate the flame temperature pentane C 5 H 12 right with a 25 percent excess air both pen, pentane and air enter the burner at 25 degree Celsius right. When we are talking about the burner basically what is that meaning meaning is that we will be using an open system this is a burner flow is taking place ok. So, therefore, an open system is a obvious choice and assume that complete combustion mean taking place that means what it will be having carbon dioxide and water and of course, it is with air. So, therefore, nitrogen will be there it will not it is an inert gas for this example and then of course, uh, 25 percent excess air there that means, some oxygen will be there at the end of uh, combustion. So, as I told that we will take an open system here right because it is a burner control volume. So, the same assumption will be doing change in kinetic energy is equal to 0 change in potential energy 0 heat will be 0 and um, work done will be 0 right this dot I am saying because it will be basically per second kind of thing you can say. <coughs> and first law of uh, thermodynamics per control volume is nothing but your H p is equal to H r right product total enthalpy of product is equal to total enthalpy of reactant side. And this uh, reaction we can consider that is uh, basically pentane one mole of pentane is reacting with basically 10 moles of oxygen and um, you know nitrogens and 5 moles of carbon dioxide 6 moles of water and 2 moles of oxygen and 37.6 nitrogen. So, this is balance of course, you will have to make you know I have just written down here, but you will have to balance right. Now, by from this you basically know the products right products are known reactant anyway it has to be given to find out this thing. Now, what we will do we will say that and keep in mind that it is 25 degree Celsius and um, we will have to find out H p H p what is your H p H p is nothing but 5 into heat of formation of carbon dioxide into uh, 6 moles of water heat of formation of water plus 2 moles of oxygen and 37.6 of heat of formation. And this is if you look at coming from the sensible enthalpy and uh, uh, T adiabatic minus 298. Uh, multiplied by the all this C p of uh, you know carbon dioxide, water, oxygen and nitrogen and their respective mole moles 
right, for the balance equation, right. This we know. <coughs> now, in this thing, interestingly, these are all known. You can find out these values from the table, right. Total enthalpy of the reactant is uh, basically summation of heat of formation of all the participating species, right. One mole of uh, pentane and 10 moles of basically oxygen and 37 moles of nitrogen and you will have to substitute these values from the table, right. That means all are known, you will have to just calculate, right. Now question arises what the C p value I will be taking, because C p is a function of temperature, yes or no? C p is a function of right, C p is a function of temperature. What temperature I should take? Because I do not know the adiabatic temperature, if I know the adiabatic temperature there, then I can very happily use that, okay. Now, let us uh, do something, we can do it iteratively, right, okay, because I will guess some values and then I will find out what it would be, okay. If I substitute this H p is equal to H r and then I will find out this is nothing but your heat of heat of reaction, because these all are 28, so that you will get the heat of reaction. This you get from a table or you know this individual heat of formation of individual species, then you can calculate, right. And that happens to be 3535 3, kilojoule, right. You, when you substitute these values from the table or from heat of reaction, you can take from the table, whichever is convenient, that will be 353 3 kilojoules. And what I will do, I will have to find out, okay, let us say that 298 Kelvin it would be, it may not be, but I am having two interest here to consider 298 Kelvin values, right. Then what I will be, I will be getting specific heat values for this various species as 298 Kelvin, these are the values, right, 37.13 for carbon dioxide, water 35.59 oxygen 29.38, nitrogen 29.14. So, if I will substitute these values, right, all those years, right, this expression, right, this expression, okay, equation 1 you can say, then I will get a temperature something 2573.34 Kelvin, right. I am assuming this temperature is what? The product temperature, okay because these are all product, which one? You, these are all product, carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, nitrogen at the product and that is a quite a big values, right. Now, I will take another guess that is 2000 Kelvin, right. It may be, may not be, right, but I will take that. Then I will get, you know, values, substitute these values because these are the table and at, oh sorry, this will be 2000 Kelvin, right. And these are different, you can compare with this, CO2 is very high because 37.13 and 60.35, there is a lot of, because it is a triatomic molecule, therefore it is higher, right. And water of course is higher, but not that much and oxygen and nitrogen there is also little bit higher. If you substitute these values, then what you will do? You will get T adiabatic 2035 Kelvin, right. Now, it is very closer, you can do, otherwise you can make a linear interpolation. If it is a, this temperature are nearby, let us say 298 Kelvin and 2000 Kelvin, you cannot do a linear interpolation. If it is, let us say 1800 Kelvin, you have guess and 2000, it is a, there is a difference and one is higher, one is lower, you can do that linear interpolation if it is interval is small and then you do. Let us say you are not happy with this thing, 2035 Kelvin, you have guess, 2000, right, this is the guess, right, guess value. 
gas value of temperature T adiabatic right. And then you are not happy then what will do you take 2000, 2035 again after that and calculate and then if you are not getting the matching properly then you take a linear interpolation and calculate easily. So, that is one way of doing ok. This we will stop over, but you think about like the products is a not known right. And unless you choose the proper specific heat values, then you will land in a temperature which is quite different than that of the adiabatic temperature. So, with this we will stop over and we will see in the next class about more about how to handle this chemical equilibrium and other things ok. Thank you.